Good morning, everyone. I'm starting shortly. Hey, oh my gosh, good to see everybody. I love when the boxes start filling in, <laughs> makes my day. <laughs> um, if you have blocks, make sure you have them handy. Um, we don't need them, but uh, I like to use them once in a while, especially when I'm feeling a little tight, like this morning. It is going to be spring shoot soon. I'm super excited. You can already tell. I already hear the birds starting to chirp a little more, which is interesting. Even though it's freezing, freezing, you hear the birds and it gives you that feeling of, of lightness, like things are changing. I walk outside at six in the morning, the sun's coming up. So it's not complete darkness. <laughs> and it's really nice to be able to not to leave work when it's uh, pitch black as well. It's like that those, the sunlight really makes a difference. Uh, we'll be starting shortly. And, and again, uh, if you have any props at all, I always like standard props, like strap, blanket. I can, as we're going through the class today, talk a little bit about bringing the strap into it. I really, again, love my props, love my props. Good. And if you're new to class, my name is Kelly. I'm seeing people, some folks uh, that are new. Um, and this class will be about 15 minutes of core work. <clears throat> and then the rest are really stretchy yoga class. So um, today we're going to kind of focus on our hips um, and our hamstrings in the stretching portion of the class, which will be very nice. I know that, again, feeling that lower back tug after sitting all day, if you're working at a at home desk or even at a work desk and standing. So any too much of anything, too much standing, too much sitting can really uh, affect the lower back hamstrings. So we will work on those a little bit uh, in our stretching portion. For the core work, uh, we are going to do uh, some work uh, starting on our hands and knees working into some plank positions, um, some side crunches before. So it'll be a little bit of aerobic. You'll, you'll be breathing heavy uh, when, we're, when we're in the, the core portion. All right, so for just before we start, I'm gonna read, I always read my little hope, hope pop opens my friend sent me. <laughs> and this one is Overcome Fear, Behold Wonder. I thought that was really nice. Richard Bach. Overcome fear, behold wonder. It's pretty, it's a pretty tall order nowadays, uh, but I think we can do it. So even just being in a core class, you're overcoming some level of fear. <laughs> All right, we're gonna start. Um, it's 8.29, but we're just gonna get into a child's pose for a moment. Oh, it's time. Big toes touch, we're gonna sink the heels back. Bring the forearms to the floor and the forehead to the floor. So we're just gonna come into this relaxed, sit, a sunken hip position. The outsides of the legs are hugging in towards you. We're gonna rest the shoulders and just breathe. Just stretch out the spine a little. Maybe wiggle side to side as you begin. Settling into child's pose, balasana. Let's start to even out the inhale and the exhale. Like maybe even counting to the count of five as you inhale and as you exhale, really regulating the intake and the exhalation. Good, relax the hips a little bit more down towards your your feet. Good. And then we're just going to gently walk our hands to the right. Extend the fingertips, walk them forward, the forearms lift. Get a stretch on the left side, the left hip drawing down. Good. Come back through center. We'll walk the hands to the other side. Sink that right hip down. Good, breathe. Stretching out just a little bit before we begin our core. Good. 
and then back through center. Beautiful. Let's roll up onto all fours. Let's do just a few cat cow, a little bit more releasing of our spine. Draw the tailbone up. Let the belly drop, let the chest draw down, and then the heart pulls forward, shoulders back. Exhale, tuck your tailbone, arch the back, chin to chest. Inhale, pull the heart forward. Shoulders roll back, crown of the head lifts up. And exhale, tuck the tailbone, arch the back, chin to chest. Good, the spine is rolling like waves to the breath. Good, couple more times. Kind of luxuriate in each movement. And as you're drawing the spine up towards the sky, the navel draws in, it's a little bit of core there. Good, inhale, pull forward. Good. Let's all come to a neutral spine. We'll begin that core work. Let's reach the right arm forward and bring the left leg straight out behind. So we're coming into that one arm balance. Melt that right shoulder back, press through the back heel. That inner left thigh spiraling towards the sky so that all the toes face the floor. This is enough core sometimes for us. You just start to feel that lift in the belly. It has to happen for the balance. And then we're gonna to start to bring the elbow and knee towards each other, rounding the spine, meeting in the center. Good, inhale, extend. We're gonna do this 12 times. Two, extend. Three, draw it in, extend. Four, extend. Five, good. Press out when you reach out, good. Six, seven, eight, good. Couple more, nine, 10, 11, and 12. Good, release the hand down, release the knee down. Good, we'll do the other side. Bring the left arm forward, right leg back. You can stay right here in this one arm balance. You don't have to move or you can do a few, it's all up to you. Good, and then on exhale, elbow and knee towards each other. Extend, two, extend. So we're moving kind of slow. Three, extend, four, extend. When you round the spine, you're drawing that navel up. You're really engaging there. And extend, seven, eight, nine, 10, almost there, 11, and 12, beautiful, hand down, knee down, come into child's pose, rest those forearms down. Taking just a breath, all the air out. Good, back up onto all fours. Let's come down onto the forearms and onto the belly. Coming into Sphinx pose for just a moment. So the shoulders are right over your elbows, your hands are shoulder distance apart. We're just gonna pull the heart forward. Good. We're then gonna tuck the toes. So you have an option here. You can just come up onto the knees, lifting the belly just a little bit up off the ground, coming into a modified forearm plank, or you can straighten the legs, coming into full forearm plank. We're gonna breathe here. So what happens in this is that gravity tries to pull our heavy pelvis down. So you wanna tuck the tailbone down and lift the hip points up. The belly engages, then we're going to pull the heart forward slightly, rolling the shoulder blades and shoulders back. Lift the thighs up, couple more breaths. Gaze down at the mat. Three, two, and one. Good. Drop the knees, Sphinx pose. Ah, lift the heart. That feels so good when you come out of that. Good, couple more breaths here. All right, tuck the toes. We're gonna to do that again. You can either come up onto the knees or in your full forearm plank. And we're gonna draw our hips to the left like so. So we're in a bit of an angle. Our 
twisted body. And we're just going to lift and lower the hips. Lift and lower. So the feet are facing the right. Hips are to the left. Ooh, we're lift and lower just a few more times. That's intense. So be on the knees if you need to. Lift, lower, lift, lower. Five, four, three, woo, two, and one. Come back up and down onto the knees. Ah, good. So not easy. So trust me, if you need to be on the knees, you're still going to get the workout. Good. So tuck the toes either on the knees and draw your hips to the right or you're coming into that full plank, forearm plank and drawing your whole side to the right, toes facing the left. We're gonna lift and lower. Whew. Keep lifting and lifting, not easy. This is a lot for your obliques. It's okay if you have your knees on the floor. Lift and lift, good. Five, four, Three, two, one. Back on to your forearm plank. Drop the knees, Sphinx pose. Beautiful. Let's reach the hands behind. Relax the arms and lift the chest and legs. Come into a little bit of a locust pose. Good. Stretch it out. Good. Hands down. Child's pose. Sink back. All right, back up onto all fours. Come into that same positioning with our body on the floor, forearms forward. So we're gonna do one last little move here in our forearm plank. We're gonna move on. So we're still in our forearm plank. This time you can either come onto your knees or come into that full forearm plank. And we're going to lift our right knee in towards our chest and round the spine, just like we were on all fours and then extend back fully into that plank. And then the left knee comes in towards the chest, round the spine and back. So we're moving. This is a lot of work, you can do it. You're either, and if you're on your knees, same movement, but with the knees coming back down. So up to you, I'm just gonna do a few of these. Good. Let's do five more, five, Four, whoo, three, two, and one. Drop down and then sit back. Child's pose. Excellent. Then come back up onto all fours. This time we're going to lay down onto the back, changing the perspective a little bit, getting off those shoulders. All right, let's start with the feet on the floor, knees bent. Bring the hands behind the head, clasp them, have the elbows out to the side. Draw the lower back to the floor. We're gonna lift and lift, gentle crunching. Lift and lift, good. Just a little bit, tiny little movements. Nothing like a good crunch. It really is the best for core. <laughs> Keep breathing. Let's go, five, four, three, two, and one, hold. Lift the feet up, knees bent, keep going. So we're not giving ourselves a break in between, we're just gonna keep that tension in the core. Now if you need to, if you're feeling anything in the lower back or the neck, please reset. You're kind of your own judge of this. I can't see what you're doing, you're a grimace on your face. Try to relax the face <laughs> if you can. Get a couple more here. Five, four, three, two, one, and hold. Now we'll do our bicycle. We're gonna extend the left leg, bring the left elbow to the right knee, and back. Opposite side, and back. Extend the left knee, right elbow, your left elbow to right knee. Extend the right. Leg, right elbow to left knee. Keep that heat built in the core, that tapas, that enthusiasm. 
in the core. Little notice. Keep the breath moving. You can go slow or as quickly as you desire. Beautiful. Five, four, three, two, one. Good, lower back down. Good, good, good. Okay. Bring your knees into your chest. We're just gonna reverse crunch a little bit. The knees bent, feet up, lift it, and bring your hands right by your side. We're gonna lift the hips and lower. Just a gentle lift of the tailbone up towards the sky, isolating the entire core. Just a few of these. Good, keep breathing. Lift and lower, lift and lower. Lift and lower. Good, couple more times, five, four, three, two, and one. Excellent, okay. Now we're going to bring our hands back behind our head yet again. Lift the chest up, lift the tailbone up, hold. Isometrically holding for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Lower down, 3, 2, 1. Lift back up, tailbone up, chest up. 12, 10, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Lower, 3, 2, 1. Last time, lift. Good. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, four, three, two, and one. Lower down, bring the knees in towards the chest. Yay, rack side to side. Good job. We are gonna be working our hamstrings and hips and lower back today, just to get a little bit of that seasonal lower back ache gone. That usually means tight hamstrings. So we'll work on those. All right, let's bring the feet to the ground, both feet. If you have a strap, grab it, bring it close by. You can use it. If you don't have a strap or a tie or anything, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. You can still do what we're doing without them. Good, so let's bring the right knee in towards our chest. And you can either extend the right leg up towards the side, flexing the foot, spreading the toes, like so with your hands right behind your leg. Or you can grab a strap and bring the strap to the ball of the foot. It's really up to you. And we're pressing through the heels, spreading the toes. Good. Flex that foot. So we flex the foot, uh, both pressing the toes forward and the heel up to get the entire leg uh, to open up. If we're just pressing the toes forward, only the front part of the foot comes open. And if we're only pressing the heel up, only the back of the leg. So we want to do both at the same time if we're pressing the pedal of a car. Extend the left leg if that feels okay for you right now. Now, if your hands are on the back of the thigh, no worries, that's still perfect. You're still getting that same action in the leg. You're still opening. I use a strap because it just feels a little bit better for me. Good, and try to straighten the leg as much as you can. That's really important to keep the knee straight. So if you need to let go of that strap a little bit, feel free. Couple more breaths. Bring the strap into the right hand, bring the left arm out to the side. We're just going to very gently allow that right leg to come to the right. So we're still controlling the leg. We're using our muscles to open. We're just not letting it flop to the side. So we want to have that left side of the body remain on the ground. 
Start to turn that right heel up towards the sky, sturdily rotating the right hip. Couple breaths here, just opening the hip, breathe. And back up with that leg, bring the strap into the left hand, bring the right arm out to the side, let everything fall. Ah, beautiful. To the left. You could put a slight bend in that right knee if you need to. Excellent, come back up through center, release the strap and allow the right leg to come to the side of the left. So you can feel the difference in your legs, already a little bit more open in that right side. Good, bend both knees again. Bring your left knee in towards you and extend the left leg up towards the sky, bringing your hands behind the thigh. If you have a strap, grab it, bring it to the ball of the foot. And same thing here. We're active in the foot. We're pressing heel up and ball of the foot forward. And feeling it in that calf, that hamstring. Stay right here if this feels sufficient for you. If that feels like you're getting the sensation you need, the opening, and you're comfortable here. If you want a little, take it a little further, you straighten the right leg off. Good, we're breathing. Noticing one side is always different than the other. Always, 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 you'll find a side that's like a little bit more stubborn, a little bit more yielding. Couple more breaths. That strap comes into the left hand, bring the right arm out to the side. And again, with, with intention, let's bring that left leg open. Good. Keeping the right side of the body on the ground. Do you, if you have your hand on your leg instead of a strap, you're holding on behind the knee still or just kind of cradling the side of the knee. Feel that opening in the hip. Good, back through center, bring the strap into the right hand, put a bend in that knee or bring your right hand to the left knee. Excuse me, I just sneezed. Ooh, excuse me. <laughs> I heard bless you in people's heads. <laughs> it's like such an automatic thing. Good, let's breathe. Good, come back to center, release the strap. Good, bring the left foot to meet the right. Good, let's bend both knees. And we're going to come into a happy baby, bringing the knees in. So we're working a lot on the hips and hamstrings first thing. Bring the knees in, bring your hands either to underneath your knees and draw the knees out to the side and bring the feet, soles of the feet up towards the sky. Or we're bringing the hands to the outsides of the feet. Whatever feels good for you. We're gonna keep a long spine. So the tailbone starts to draw down. If your tailbone's rolling up into a ball, please bring your hands underneath your knees because we want to keep the spine long here and the hips open. You can rock side to side if that feels good. But yeah, we need a little hip opening here, little hamstring. You can try straightening one leg. That should feel nice. Bending it back and then the other, just kind of experimenting in this. I like to do that sometimes. Straighten the right and then straighten the left. Couple more breaths. Release the legs, bring your knees in and rock forward and back, coming up onto all fours. Ah, good, tabletop position. We're gonna come in again a little bit more into our hips and hamstrings. You can bring a blanket if your knees are sensitive onto the floor underneath you. Let's bring the right foot forward and scoot the left leg back. Coming into that low lunge, you can of course bring blocks to either side of the front foot if you want a little bit more length. We're drawing the left hip forward and right hip back, scissoring the inner thighs. So there's a bit of a, a, a firmness in the outer hip as we release the front of the left leg and the thigh, good. You can bring your hands to the top 
of the uh, right thigh and straighten the arms, shoulders over hips. And of course the arms can sweep up at any point or keep them right where they are, depending. The shoulders are restless today. You can open them up a little bit by bringing the elbows out to the side and squeezing the shoulder blade. By restless, I mean they're screaming for something. <laughs> You're not sure what. <laughs> <laughs> Mine do that sometimes, like they feel like I need to do something with my arms, but I'm not really sure. Sometimes just an openness in the heart, a squeezing of the shoulder blades. Ah, good. Let's reach the arms up. You can bring your hands to the floor or to the blocks and straighten your right leg, bringing the toes towards the face into a runner stretch. So we're getting again into the hamstrings, keep drawing that right hip back. Good. You don't have to go down very far to feel this one. Good. Bring the foot down. Move the blocks. Let's come back into tabletop and we'll switch sides. Left foot forward. Scoop the right foot back. Ah, get nice and long. Find length in the spine. Maybe extend the crown of the head up, the shoulders down. Feel that lengthening in the neck. Good. So we're kind of getting this imagining a line from the back toes through the crown of the head, like a bit of an angle. You can reach the arms up or bring the hands to the top of the left thigh, stack the shoulders over the hips, arms up when you're ready, if you want to. Good, melt the shoulders down. Let's open the heart, squeeze the shoulder blades. Oh, good, nice yawning open of the chest. Breathe into that open space. Good, bring the arms up and bring the hands down. Let's straighten the front leg, draw the toes towards the face and drape over the top of the thigh. Good, foot down, excellent. Move the blocks, tabletop. Okay, let's come into our downward facing dog. We're gonna move around in downward facing dog for a moment just to get into the backs of the legs and the calves. So we're coming into tabletop. We're gonna lift the knees and then set the hips back and up. Let's sink the heels down. Notice if you can get into this a little easier than before. Good, lifting those hips high, pressing the thighs back energizing the legs. So we may feel our legs uh, are kind of an afterthought sometimes because we're weight, our weight is so much forward in our arms. So let's try to lift the hips up and draw the thighs towards the back of the room, then sink the heels down. Good, deep breaths. Excellent, okay. So now we'll come up on the tippy toes and send the heels to the right and turn the toes to the left and sink the heels down. So now we're coming into the outside of that right leg a little bit more, changing the dynamic of the leg, changes the positioning of the stretch a little bit. Deep breaths. Come back through center and then sink the Heels to the opposite side, left side, toes facing the right. Now we're the outside of that left leg, a little bit more. IT band, that whole area that can cause us some issues. Good, come back through center. Excellent. All right, let's step the feet forward into our forward fold. Feet our hips with distance apart, bend the knees very deeply. And then we're gonna grab onto opposite elbows hanging in ragdoll. So we start with a very bent knee so that our belly can rest on the thighs as much as possible. And as the back body starts to loosen up in this position, we can start straightening the legs or bending one knee and then the other. So you can play around here, seeing how much you can straighten the knees without lifting the belly off the thighs. We're hinging at our hips. There is a hinge there where there is not one in our back. 
And as we learn that forward fold, this is where our lower back troubles start to go away a little bit because we're gonna allow the muscles, the hamstrings to stretch without tugging at the lower back. It's really a nice feeling. So it's not about the straight leg, it's about how the hinge is at the hips. A couple more breaths here. Good, let's bring the fingertips to the floor and we're gonna lift the heart and look forward. And then exhale into a forward fold, draping over. See if you can go a little deeper here. Inhale, lift the heart. Exhale, drape over. One more time, inhale, lift. And forward fold. Root down in your feet, rise all the way up to standing. Arms out to the side, up over the head. Exhale the hands by your sides. Good, let's come to the long end of the mat facing the long end. Again, into the hips just a little bit more. Let's turn the heels in slightly. Toes are facing out, so our feet are slightly wider than the hips, not too far out. We're gonna bring the hands to the creases of the hips and just sink the hips down with the knees out to the side, coming into goddess pose. We're rolling to the outer border of the foot, reaching the arms out to the side, it cactus arms, palms facing forward, tuck the tailbone. We're lifting the bottom of the pelvis up as we sink into the hips. So there's a stability in the pelvis as well as a, as a stretch. I keep breathing. Let's straighten the legs, arms up, five-pointed star. Good, exhale, sink back into those hips. You can stay right here or bring the right forearm onto the, onto the right thigh and bring the left arm up and over, extending through your side body. Back through center. Straighten the legs, arms up, five-pointed star. Last time, bend in. Bring the left forearm to the left thigh, right arm up and over. Back through center. Straighten the legs, five-pointed star. Good, bring your hands to the heart. Turn your toes all in the same direction, slightly pigeon-toed. Maybe heel toe your feet a little bit wider apart. Reach the arms out to the side with your palms facing down. We're gonna lean forward to a nice flat back and hold. Good. And then exhale, hands to either the outsides of your shins or the floor. And let the crown of the head draw down towards the ground. Roll towards the front of the foot so that the hips remain in line with the heels. We're not leaning back. Maybe engage the quadriceps by lifting the kneecaps to release the hamstrings a little bit more. Good, bring your hands to the floor. Let's take that uh, left hand and bring it to the outside of either your right foot or your right shin. Bring the right hand to the lower back and we're gonna twist towards the right. Let's come back through center. Walk your uh, right hand to the outside of the left shin or foot. Bring the right hand to the lower back and twist to the left. Let the heart lead. Nice flat back here. And release both hands to the floor or two blocks and let the head hang forward fold, just full on. So you can feel that in the back of the legs, I'm sure. Excellent, walk the hands forward. Heel toe, your feet slightly more together. Keep going. 
till they're hips distance apart. Forward fold. And let's come down onto our knees, face the long or the front of the mat again. Okay. Coming into our final hip openers before we lower onto the back. We're gonna bring our right foot forward. Let the left leg scoot all the way back and bring both hands to the inside of that foot. Turn your right toes out a little bit to the side toward the corner of the mat. <coughs> Excuse me, you can use blocks for your forearms like so. You can tuck the back toe and lift the back knee to get a really deep stretch in the, in the hip. Make it a very active dragon pose or just stay on your hands. We will get a little bit deeper here, just a moment. But you do what you have to, you can stay right where you are. Hip openers take a little minute. It's not something that we, we rush through. The hips being so active all the time, our kind of guardian muscles, our guardian area where we, we walk, we hold our balance, we move. So they're always a little bit on guard. So it takes a moment for them to release. You can stay right where you are or you can come onto your, your hands. Kind of roll to the outer border of that right foot and bend the left knee towards your rear so that you're feeling a stretch in the left thigh. You can then turn open, bringing the right hand to the outside of the left foot. That's only if you feel like doing this. If you were comfortable and happy exactly where you were, stay there. Just opening the front of the leg, the hip. Good, a couple more breaths. Release, beautiful, nice and slow. Let's come back up onto uh, the left knee, come back into tabletop, wiggle it out a little bit. We'll do the other side. Good. Left foot forward, left toes out toward to the side. Scoot the right leg back as much as you can. Again, block forearms, hands, wherever you want to as set the upper body. So the goal in the upper body is to keep a straight, or not a straight, a long spine. We're not, I tend to round my spine because I have very tight hips. So I come up onto a block or my hands, depending. You can, of course, tuck the right toes and lift the right knee to get a very intense stretch, a little bit more active pose. All up to you. We'll breathe here. I was reading something early in the week that was talking about how yoga, in yoga, we control, we come into poses of controlled stress, meaning we are in this pose, it is causing our body some sort of effort and stress, and we're breathing through it, and then coming out of that stress. And what that is, is a practice for our real life when uncontrolled stress comes at us, and it teaches us a reaction to it, the breath, the settling in the clear focus, kind of like that, uh, that little analogy. All right, we're gonna come up nice and slow, move the block to the side, roll to the outer border, if you want to, <laughs> of the left foot, bend the right knee, activating that quadricep, reach back with the left hand to the outside of the right foot, draw that foot in, open the chest. This is like a little pretzel pose. Moving in all different directions. Couple more breaths here. Good, release that foot gently. All right, come back into tabletop. Wiggle it out, maybe take a cat cow. Beautiful, back to a seated position. Let's come into our cobbler's pose. So our feet are together, our knees apart. We're opening the feet like little books, letting the knees fall 
to the side. So we're doing a lot of opening of the legs. So it can be a very intense feeling. In this particular pose, let's try to uh, come into it slowly. So we're kind of sitting up at first with the arms straight and the legs just releasing. And then with every exhale, maybe bending the elbows and leaning forward just a little bit more and drawing the knees down. So just a very slow ease into this hip opener. Couple more breaths here. Slowly lowering down closer to the feet. One last breath. Inhale, come up nice and slow. Good, bring your feet. I'm moving around so you can see me. You don't have to move. <laughs> bring your feet to the floor with your knees bent. Let the knees fall to the left and bring your left foot to the top, to the top of the right thigh so that your legs are kind of staggered. And we're gonna to start to turn the torso to the left, coming into deer pose, coming so that we're facing the back of the mat, bringing the forearms down. This is a very intense twist. It should feel very good after core and hip work. Good. And if you can't come down onto the forearms, you just stay on your hands with your arms straight, like so. Breathe into it. Good, come back up, let's come back through center. Both feet come back to the floor, knees bent. And then we're gonna bring the knees to the right, bringing the right foot to the top of the left knee. We're gonna turn the torso to the right, to the back of the mat, either staying up on the hands like so, or bringing the forearms onto the ground. I really love this pose, maybe you will too, maybe you will not, but there's just something about this twist that feels very deep and it's stable. There's a stability because of the forearms and the hands and the, almost the entire lower body on the floor. And we did a lot of uh, obliques. So this should feel, you should feel this stretch. Couple more breaths. Good. Come back up nice and slow. Let's unravel. Beautiful. Let's come on to the back for our final hip openers. Really focused on those today. Good. Outer hips here. Let's bring the right ankle over the left knee. Bring the left knee in towards you and reach through the legs for the back of that uh, left hamstring. If you want a more intense stretch, Bend the left knee further, bringing the heel towards your rear a little, and bringing your hands to the top of the shin, the left shin. You'll feel that roll down that right hip, the right uh, quadricep, the right hamstring stretches. It's pretty intense. So either one, either hand behind or on top of the shin. Good. Keep breathing. Allow that tailbone to release down to the ground. We want to keep a nice. Relaxed spine, tailbone relaxed, lower back relaxed. And remember, we'll be out of this shortly. That's the beauty of yoga. We take about 10 breaths and then we move on. <laughs> like most situations, most, not all. You can just take about 10 breaths and move on. <laughs> all right, let's release that foot down. Uncross the right leg and cross the left ankle over the right. Draw the knee in, reaching through the legs. Again, you can bring your hands to the top of the right shin and pull in, feeling a little bit more action on that left side. It's a slight difference, but it does make some difference if you're not feeling it in the other 
position. If you've already done thread the needle a million times, you might take it to a different level. Notice what's happening. Good, bring that foot down, uncross your legs. Good, windshield wipe your knees back and forth. We're just gonna take one little bridge pose. We're gonna hold for 10 breaths. So bring your hands right by your hips, feet hips width distance, press down in the feet, lift the hips up, roll the shoulders underneath. Keep that tailbone tucked towards the knees. Good, deep breaths. If you notice that your lower back is dragging down in your rear, press a little bit dip more into your feet. Deep breath. All the air out. Let's lower down on an exhale. Draw the knees in towards the chest. Let the lower back rest, maybe rock side to side. Good, bring the feet to the floor, extend the legs, bring the arms by your sides, come into Shavasana. Just a very short one-ish minute Shavasana where you're connecting with the breath, trying to keep those thoughts coming back and back and back to the present. If you want to, you can turn the sound and the camera off and stay in Shavasana a little longer. If you're staying in Shavasana, please do. If you're coming out, just start to gently deepen your inhale and your exhale. Move the head side to side and wiggle the fingers and toes. Draw the knees in towards your chest, roll over to the right side. And then with the aid of the left hand, come to a comfortable seated position and hands to heart. I hope you enjoyed our hip focus today. I really love sharing the practice on Saturday mornings with all of you. Thank you so much for joining me. Victory to our spirits, peace to all beings. Namaste. Have an excellent rest of your day. Thank you so much for coming. So grateful for you. Thank you.